Well, hey everybody, I'm Bill. And I'm Elizabeth. Live simple. Live free. I've been having um, people asking questions about, you know, how am I eating, what am I doing, um, talking about the swimming and stuff like that. And I hadn't done an, an update in a little while. And also, we want to welcome a lot of new people who have come to our channel that, you know, haven't been kind of, uh, you know, along on this journey quite as, as long with us. And so I just wanted to um, do a little bit of an update and also welcome all of our new people very, very much. We're glad to have you along with yep, us. Absolutely. Yep. Um, I have been on what's called the Autoimmune Protocol Paleo Diet. And that is specifically geared toward dealing with autoimmune inflammatory issues. And I, um, I have psoriasis, psoriatic arthritis, asthma, different things like that. And so no longer, I'm no longer able to be on the Humira. And um, I've whittled, the doctors finally can whittle my meds down to just one um, that I have to take because I did have a stroke in 2012. And so um, I've been really trying to learn uh, ways to take the best possible care of myself that I can, especially because the arthritis can be become can become pretty crippling. And so um, good friends of ours told us about this autoimmune protocol diet, and she's had very good results um, with some autoimmune problems that she has had. So there's a doctor, um, her name is Sarah Ballantyne. Uh, she has a doctorate in uh, a PhD in biomedical physics and um, put a lot of research into this. And um, paleo is its own kind of diet, but uh, this is like really stricter than paleo. It, yeah, it starts with the paleo and then it goes from there as far as the autoimmune protocol. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have had a lot of people talking to me about the keto diet, um, about ketogenesis, and especially if people have been noticing that I've been losing some weight, they have highly recommended that because it's so good for weight loss. Um, but I need you to know I'm not on a ketogenic diet and actually I'm not eating this way to lose weight. Um, that is a very nice side effect. Um, I've been doing this for about seven months now and I think I've lost about 70 pounds, which is a good steady, that's a good rate. Mm -hmm. That's not too fast and you know, it's fast enough, it's kind of fun. But um, then the main thing with this entire diet has been to try to help my body to get over all the inflammatory issues um, that I have struggled with. And so um, she uh, has a textbook kind of a thing you can read. She has several cookbooks and I've learned a lot from her and I've also discovered there's a lot of AIP stuff online from different people that have had real good results with it and they've got recipes and stuff. So that is basically how I have been eating. Um, I've had a lot of people in comments. Just let me say, you were just talking about Sarah Ballantyne's book. She actually has three of them. She has one that's the basic textbook, and then there are two cookbooks, one from her and one from her and a partner. Yeah. All three of them are listed in our Amazon store. If you're interested in finding out what we're talking about, that's what we're talking about. We, our Amazon store is down, down below. Right. Um, by the way, it doesn't cost more to buy from that store. We just put the books in there so it's easy for you to find them. Right. You know, um, and we get a little benefit from it, but it's not that much. The main thing is it just makes it easy access for you to be able to find them if you're interested in looking at them. Right. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, people have, have, you know, made comments, you know, like, oh, be careful, don't be eating fruit. Um, you should never have fruit. You know, you'll mess up the keto and all that. Well, um, I'm not in ketogenesis. Uh, that's not the purpose with this. Um, fruit is, is a healthy part of how I need to eat. Mm -hmm. And so, um, people have offered so many neat suggestions and, I appreciate that, and I just um, wanted to let you know what I'm actually doing. Um, it's very strict, but um, it's healthy. It's not doing anything, uh, there's nothing about it that I can't eat this way the rest of my life. So, this is very different for me. I'm not on a diet um, to lose weight. I have to change how I eat for the rest of my life. That's just the way it is. Yeah. So you're not going on a diet, you're changing your diet. Yes. And I, it's got to be a permanent change. I can't look at this like, wow, if I lose enough weight, then I can go back to eating what I like again. Um, it's because this is for medical, for health reasons. And um, from everything I can gather, I can do this the rest of my life, and it'll, it'll be very healthy. So um, that's the different attitude with it. Like I said, she, even the doctor in the book said that um, don't do this for weight loss. Your body will find whatever level it needs to find if you stick to it. 
And, um, and I'm finding that to certainly be true because my body definitely wanted to be skinnier. <laughs> so that's what it's, I'm losing weight. But um, one of the main things you have to be careful not to eat on this diet are what they call nightshades. Um, I'll talk about vegetables first here. I'm encouraged to have tons of vegetables. Uh, for the first time in my life, I have vegetables every meal. Breakfast. It's not a normal breakfast anymore. There's vegetables. Right. <laughs> you know? Well, you can't eat virtually anything that's considered normal. Breakfast. Oh, yeah, yeah. Except the bacon. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about bacon. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can have eggs, but not too many of them, and I can't have the whites. Just the yolk. That's interesting, huh? Um, but no, I, I, I have vegetables, you know. Um, the nightshade family is very bad for inflammation problems and arthritis problems. So there's no tomatoes, no potatoes. Um, I love eggplant, no eggplant, no peppers. All that nightshade family, you know, I have to be very careful to stay away from it. Um, no legumes, no um, beans, uh, peas, uh, green beans, absolutely no grains, none whatsoever, not even quinoa uh, or, you know, good old buckwheat or anything like that, no grains whatsoever. And that, of course, that's going to include corn, you know, corn's a green, rice, and, and rice, rice, yeah. no rice. Um, so, but there's a lot of vegetables left, my goodness. Good root vegetables. We can't. I can have sweet potatoes, and I love them. Um, Bill's been kind of eating them with me. He loves potatoes. Yeah. I love potatoes, and we used to have them at every meal. But fortunately, I also love the sweet sweet potatoes because we now have sweet potatoes at almost every meal. <laughs> they're just they're very good for you, and it just gives a little bit of a balance to the meal. Um, I've learned to love rutabagas and and parsnips and turnips and all these root vegetables. Which, by the way, when you Cook them with some sweet potato or some carrots or something. Mash them all up. Throw in a little bit of coconut milk and and uh, we use uh, the Himalayan pink salt and sea salt. Um, it's good. Bill puts a little bit of butter in his. We don't sweeten them up with a bunch of stuff. It's just they're good. Um, but anyway, uh, root vegetables, um, uh, uh, squash, and lots of greens. So there's a lot of veggies that I can have. Yeah, one yeah. of the things you know I've. I'm not eating a complete uh, AIP diet like she is, but I'm adjusting a lot to eat like she does. And one of the things that I have really changed in my thinking was about greens, about lettuce, you know. Well, you, especially green lettuces. Yeah, not iceberg. We never yeah. do iceberg. Both of us, I think, used to think of lettuce as a base to build a salad on. Yeah, that, now, both of us realize that greens, lettuce, dark lettuce, is a vegetable just in itself. Yes. Yes. Like spinach, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Spinach is a green, but you don't think of it as lettuce, you think of it as a vegetable. Right. <laughs> so, many, all of the greens that you, you make a salad out of are actually vegetables in themselves. And I've had to change my thinking about, about right. that. Yeah, because I'm more limited now with what I can put in a salad, um, but I can still really enjoy a salad. And goodness, I still put in cucumbers and squash and, and uh, lots of good stuff like that. But yeah, the, the greens themselves are healthy vegetables, you know. So I'm encouraged to have lots and lots and lots of vegetables. Um, there's just a few that I can't have. Um, like I said, no greens, absolutely no dairy. Um, actually, paleo really recommends nuts and seeds and stuff, but I can't on the AIP, the autoimmune protocol. No nuts, no seeds. And that tends to knock out um, some seasonings I have to be careful about. They're either based on peppers or on some type of seed can have a lot of the herbs though, you know, a lot of the wonderful herbs and spices. Um, so like nutmeg, for instance, can't have nutmeg because that's actually from a nutmeg seed. You know, I've discovered mace is delicious. I'm allowed to have mace. So that's actually the outside part of a nutmeg. And anyway, it's, it's mm. very good. Yeah. Um, so uh, the uh, fruits are also very good for me. Pineapple is really good for infl inflammation issues. Um, people have asked if I could still use my Thrive Life food, you know, because we have we use Thrive Life freeze-dried food. And I'm like, oh, yeah, my goodness. Um, it's just basic food. Um, the, the, it, it may, they maintain the phytonutrients, the uh, enzymes, the, like the bromelain and the pineapple. All of that is still preserved. The only thing that's been taken out is H2O, and then it's very carefully protected. So um, the pineapple, if I use my Thrive Life pineapple, it's still got all those mm -hmm. good anti-inflammatory factors in it'll still curdle milk that's a good sign <laughs> so basically anything that you can use that you can eat on the AIP you can use thrive oh yeah I mean it's just food it's yeah. just basic basic food so right. um, 
yeah. So I've been able to definitely use it. Um, I'll show you a picture here of my breakfast this morning. And I should have filmed making it. I forgot. But anyway, my breakfast this morning. Um, I've been able to find some little sausage patties. I'll talk about meat here. But sausage patties that don't have anything in there I'm not supposed to have. They're very healthy. Um, and then there's this green drink. And um, Thrive has come up with something now called Ruvi, R-U-V-I, which is just taking vegetables and fruit the, the powder from it being freeze-dried and mixing them together in these really super healthy drinks that are, um, it's about 50% vegetable and 50% fruit. They're wonderful. Um, so I can have those sometimes just to make sure I'm getting good fruits and vegetables. Each one of them is four full servings of fruits and vegetables. Yeah, and with nothing in it except just fruits and vegetables. Right. They don't take anything out and they don't add anything in. So it's the full fruits and vegetables and no added additives at all. Um, and this morning I took one of those, and then I threw in some pineapple and a bunch of kale um, and um, apricot. It was all my freeze-dried, all my Thrive, and I made an incredible smoothie. So um, it gets vegetables in me. I've got vegetables from the ruby and vegetables from the kale, and then, you know, I had, I had the protein, the meat. Um, every meal I'm supposed to have minimum of some kind of protein and vegetables. So um, it was good. It, you know, it was very nutritious, and... Um, the, the food, we really appreciate the food because um, it's got a 25-year shelf life and then a year shelf life for most of them after you open it. And so I don't have any waste. And um, it, it, I really appreciate it a lot. And I can use it because it's still good for me. So people have asked about that. So um, so we have uh, fruits. Um, you, know, I wanna you know, I try to emphasize having berries. Um, we have discovered that you take... Um, this works better actually with frozen ones, but for just a treat or a little snack, take some frozen blueberries. I get organic frozen blueberries or, or um, black cherries or, uh, you know, uh, raspberry. Put a little bit of coconut, good, good, healthy coconut milk on it. This is amazing. <laughs> She's been eating it for a while as a snack in the evening, and I wanted a snack, and I was out of what I usually have. So she said, try this, and I was skeptical, but I tried it. I took some frozen blueberries and cherries that she had and I poured some of the coconut milk on top because the berries are frozen. As soon as the coconut milk hit them, the coconut milk instantly froze solid. Yep. And then you have to like chop it up with a spoon to be able to eat it. It was better than ice cream by far. Yeah. And she can't eat ice cream because she can't have the sugar or the, uh, the dairy. The dairy, yeah. I can. But if I had a bowl of ice cream and a bowl of berries with coconut milk, I would take the berries with the coconut milk every time now I love it yeah and it's so much healthier yeah the, the berries are so good for you and the coconut milk's actually good for you so yeah I I can have vegetables and fruit um, I can have clean healthy meat uh, and fish and I'm supposed to have you know plenty of it um, I'm using a lot of fish um, I you have to avoid the big ones um, it's not good to have for me to have too much tuna or big swordfish or the really, you know, we, people don't realize how huge tuna are really are. Those are like top feeders um, and they can, can get mercury accumulating. So, um, and I'm, not, I'm supposed to avoid it completely. So I'm, you know, I'm eating um, salmon, of course, is wonderful. And stuff with lots of omega-3s, sardines. Um, I sometimes will have a smoothie in the morning with some sardines, but not in the smoothie. Just, <laughs> I'll eat sardines and I'll drink a smoothie. Um, you know, mackerel, uh, just a lot of different fish um, I'm really enjoying. And then healthy, clean meats. Um, I'm trying to get grass-fed, make sure there's nothing extra added to it. We were just given um, some venison, which was a huge blessing. That's a very clean meat because it's just a wild, you know, it, yeah, it's, it, venison's very good for you and um, for me, you know, on this diet. So I'm really just trying to get good, healthy meats. Organ meats are highly recommended because they're power-packed with nutrition. See, the main focus of this is to take out food that uh, anything you eat that could cause inf inflammation and then to make sure that what you are eating is just power packed full of nutrition. And then our body wants to heal, you know. So we've talked about fruits and vegetables and, you know, healthy meat and, um, and then healthy fats. So no, ve no basic, you know, um, vegetable oils. But I can have avocado oil, olive oil, um, coconut oil. Coconut stuff's wonderful. And, um, you know, goodness, healthy, clean bacon, bacon fat, lard from a healthy animal, tallow from a healthy animal. All that is very recommended. And, um, you know, I've, I just, I've seen the benefits from it. 
you know, I've been doing this now for a while, and, um, you know, it, it's not like it's going to instantly cure um, something as, ser as serious as this. My, I have very, very severe psoriasis, but uh, Bill will explain one of the things that he's noticed that's really different. Um, her, her psoriasis on her skin, of course, when she was using the Humira for 10 years, it had pretty much cleared up. Right. Now that she's not using that anymore, it came back. And then that, after that, she started on the AIP protocol. Uh, that, yeah. AIP, yeah. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it's okay. her skin, when the psoriasis came back, one of the things that her skin would flake, would slough yeah. off you your know, um, dead skin. You're, you just, you, you're making too much yeah. skin cells. It just, you just a snowstorm everywhere you go. And I know it was, it was embarrassing for her. Oh, but it frustrated me. So. She, she was flaking so badly that around her recliner, I basically had to vacuum every day because all over, you know, the, the snowstorm, as she called it, was all over the floor. Yeah. I wanted to insert this right here um, because it's, this addresses another question that I get all the time while we're talking about this. Um, and that is different kinds of lotions and kinds of things that you can just put on your skin when you have psoriasis. Um, I think sometimes if people have very mild cases of it, a, a little bit of steroid cream if somebody has a couple little dots on their elbows, yes, that, I mean, maybe it'll, it'll help it a little bit. But um, when I, I, I'm covered with it, I'm absolutely got psoriasis everywhere. Actually, in all the years I've had it, nothing that you put on the outside ever has made any difference at all. I've tried tons of different stuff. Sunshine can be nice because vitamin D, um, UV treatment can help, but you gotta be extremely careful not to burn. So I just wanted to address the fact very quickly here that there's nothing you can really do on the outside um, that will heal it. It has to happen from the inside out. Like I said, possibly except with the exception of just the vitamin D from the UV. All right. And it was sometime last fall after you'd been on it for three or four months, all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, it's been like five or six days and I haven't vacuumed the floor. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, it's, the flaking is gone. And, yeah. you know, the psoriasis is still there, but it's much lighter color than it was and it's not flaking off and scabbing off anymore. So there's been definite improvement and it's a long, slow process, but she's definitely seeing the improvement there. Right. Right. And, you know, um, as far as the joint pain and stuff, um, I'm not worsening. And I don't know what it'd be like if I was not on the Humira and not doing this. Well, but when you, you know, went off of the Humira, your arthritis got, it, it flared. Got, get flared and it got worse quickly, Yeah, yeah. badly. Yeah. And then you started on the AIP and it just halted that. Yeah, it's kind of leveled out. And in fact, I, I right now have a torn meniscus in my right knee. It's a torn cartilage. And um, they want to replace my knee because the damage from arthritis is so bad. I'm not really ready for that. <laughs> um, but uh, just with doing exercise and doing therapy and all that stuff, it's been hanging in there amazingly well. So I don't know. I, I just feel like um, there's been a combination of facts. It's easier to get around because I I'm, I'm, don't weigh as much. Um, but I don't feel like I'm getting worse arthritis. And believe me, on its own, it, it worsens. You know, the psoriatic arthritis, like rheumatoid arthritis, they're very degenerative, and it's ugh, it's really bad. And so um, I feel like I'm at least it's not worsening from right. everything I can tell. Right. And um, my face has been getting it really bad, and I think that is actually um, improving, mm -hmm. especially right around my eye. Well, yeah, you told me a, a while ago that you were getting it on your eyelid, and it was very irritating, and then a couple weeks later you said that it was clearing up. Right. It's still there, but it's not getting worse, and it's yeah. slowly clearing. Yeah. So natural things... Um, you have to give your body time. You have to give it a chance. Right. And I haven't been doing this perfectly. It's been a real process trying to learn how to eat this way and how to really stick to it. Because, you know, I will be somewhere and I, I'll end up, you know, I don't know exactly what that piece of meat, the animal, came from. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's been a process for me right. to get stricter and stricter about right. this. So. And one thing you mentioned right at the beginning is, you're not doing this for weight loss, right? But that that's been one of the great side effects, and you've lost seventy pounds. Yeah, you said? about seventy now. Yeah. yeah. We had the chance to go um, recently. We um, earned this trip through Thrive Life, which was really wonderful to go to the Bahamas. And um, I have real, real balance issues from the stroke. It has. It just. It messed up my vestibular um, part of my brain on the left side. And um, so I had to really be careful about balance. And people were commenting that I was just walking out in the sand and I even got into the ocean. And I, I mean, I still 
I'm still awkward, but I did it, and that's very exciting. And the reason I'm mentioning that, I mean, people have said that it was really cool to see me walking out there or to see me walking up and down the boardwalk like I was. And um, I also wanted to mention um, that I am still using the technology that's from Vox Life, V-O-X-X -X Life. Um, the, uh, uh, one of our viewers finally convinced me to try it. She had convinced me for a long time. But it, this technology just, um, it's almost like acupressure or something, but it... I have it in the soles, in my shoes, you can have it in socks, you can have it on patches. It's neurotechnology. It's neurotechnology. And they've actually seen that it, the pressure that it puts does something with the peripheral nervous system that really helps your brain to stabilize and level out. And um, the first time I actually was willing to try it, and it took a long time to convince me, I experimented by just closing my eyes and standing. Because normally, without my eyes open, I didn't have an appropriate reception left um, and I would just, I, I had to be careful. If I close my eyes, I'd just fall over. And um, so I put the tech on and um, just stood up and <laughs> realized I stabilized. I, I was so blown away. Yeah. So actually now, um, I just, that's part of my, you know, um, just uh, update. Actually now I really can tell the difference if I'm using it or not. And um, um, I, <laughs> If you'd like to see some of those previous uh, vid uh, videos, because she talked at, at length about oh, yeah. how all of this affected her. We'll put a link up here with the playlist so you can go watch those videos. Right. We'll have we'll have it down below too, yeah. and in the end screen, right. you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So that's just part of where things are at. I am noticing that at least a little bit, I'm even better off now. I do better now, even if I don't have the tech on than I used to. I think it's starting to kind of help me have some little bit of improvement. Actually, just it, even if I'm not using it, which is amazing to me. Which is, I think, one of the reasons why I handled the sand and the water. I forgot to take patches with me, so I didn't have anything on my feet. You know, I don't want to wear socks out there in the ocean. Um, but I did better. And of course, when I was waltzing up and down the boardwalk, I was in the, um, I had the insoles in. So they're in my slippers, they're in my shoes. I just, I, I can tell the difference and it makes my strength and my balance and everything so much yeah. better. So you've been using them for like oh, 14 or 15 months now. Yeah. And yeah. people are asking, are they still working? Well, you saw the evidence yeah. in the Bahamas when yeah. a lot of people said, you're so stable now walking around, you're, you're healing. It's the, it's the Vox Life neurotechnology that's right. making the difference still. I experimented yesterday just barefoot and actually, I was stable for a few seconds. With your eyes closed. Uh, with, with my eyes closed. Yeah. Um, and then I started to tip over. But I mean, the fact that I was even stable for a few seconds is amazing. And then it's it just, I still can't hardly believe was, it. You're talking about you tried it without standing on yeah. the inside. Yeah, I was barefoot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I noticed an improvement. It was amazing. And then I started tipping over. Yeah, and then you... I went and put my slippers back on with the tech in there. And I just stood there and went... Yeah. <laughs> you know, it sounds like craziness, but I just, I'm being honest, it has helped. So, um, we are, you know, I just wanted to let you guys know I am swimming. Uh, I am determined to do a mile. I'm up to about a half, uh, close to a half, um, and very grateful for that wonderful place I can go mm -hmm. to swim. Um, very much trying to stick to this diet um, for health reasons. And we'll see, you know, where my body stabilizes as far as weight. But getting the weight off is, I mean, I'm, I'm almost 64. i got to get this weight off. before You know, I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have problems with cholesterol. I never have. I'm not diabetic. But if I stay this heavy and I get older, I'm going to start having real problems. So I, I just need to do this. But the main thing is I want to eat this very, very healthy way, hoping maybe my body is going to be able to, um, you know, not be having so many autoimmune problems. Right. So, swimming, um, the diet, and these crazy things in my shoes, the Vox technology, um, those are just things that are happening. Right. And so people have asked, so I wanted to give you an update, and I appreciate you guys and all your suggestions and how encouraging you are. And um, yeah, we'll see what this old lady's going to do here. And anything that I do that's healthier with how we eat is going to be good for him, too. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> She's dragging me along, kicking and screaming. <laughs> um, I want him to stay healthy and strong. Just kicking. Just kicking, not <laughs> screaming. <laughs> uh, no, I want him to be as healthy as possible, too. And I won't be too much longer, and we're going to get back out on that bike. Yep. Oh, I'm so yep. looking forward. That's going to be good for my knee, too. Mm -hmm. Even the orthopedic surgeon said that that motion on a bike is like really helps an injured knee. So, right. cool. Um, just one other thing I wanted to say about the Vox Life neurotechnology. 
you have found great relief uh, with your balance issues from your stroke. But there are also many other issues that uh, can be can find improvement. We actually can say that it helps with diabetic neuropathy, yeah. uh, uh, plantar um, fasciitis, yeah. uh, and then they, they talk about um, endurance and balance. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there is a website, I'm sorry, a Facebook group called um, Vox Life Testimonials, and it's filled with thousands of testimony, personal testimonials of, of people who have been helped with a variety of different issues. So, <clears throat> if you're struggling with something and you want to know if Vox Life can help, there's no guarantee because it, everybody's, everybody's brain body different. and brain is different, but yeah. many people are getting great results. You can go to the Testimonials Facebook group page, and I'll put a link for that down below too. And then on the left, when you go there, on the left there's a place where you can search. You can put in whatever issue you're dealing with, fibromyalgia, uh, neuropathy, multiple sclerosis, all kinds of things like that. Search that, and then you can see the testimonials of other people who are dealing with the same issue that you are. And I also wanted to uh, announce, if you will, that oh yeah, Vox Life is now available in the UK. Yeah. And I'm very excited about that. For our friends in the UK, and I know we get many comments from, from you all the time, it's now available in the UK. Just when you go to the website, pick the UK website and you can go That's from so there. Cool. Um, the lady that first told me about it and kind of has ended up sponsoring us with Vox Life has multiple sclerosis. Yeah. And um, oh my goodness, to see her going from a wheelchair to being able to walk around with a cane, um, it has transformed her life. She still has weakness and problems, but boy, she is doing so hugely much better. Yeah. So, you know, um, I, I feel like I, I do want to say that if somebody would like to try the technology, if they do go through our site, our website, which we'll have the link for, not only is that helpful to us, but it, this company really um, is very beneficial to the next generation up, the next line up. And I love being able to do things that help support her because yeah. she's done so much to help me. So, um, yeah, it, it, it helps her, too. She's really has really put a lot into this. So anyway, OK. <laughs> Well, I guess that's about it. You yeah. talked about your AIP and all of the benefits there, and you talked about that you're still using Vox and it's still making a huge difference. I can't believe it does, but it does. Yeah. I'm just being honest. And we've seen now where they they have brain scans that show the effect it has on the brain. Yeah. It's pretty amazing, yeah. um, to, these special scans and stuff. All righty. Well, thanks for you, thanks for you guys. And um, I just wanted to let you know what was going on. And uh, so I'll, I'll let you know how I'm doing with the laps and... And um, we'll let you know when we get out on the bike. And so I try to do, I try to do some, maybe do some AIP recipes for you guys. And um, yeah, I'm still trying to get kind of moved in, but yeah. I'm tr trying to keep on top of it. So, all right, well, listen, love you guys. We'll get going here. Okay, thank so, you very much for watching. Yeah, live simple. Live free. You'll be blessed. Okay. Love you guys, and we will see you soon. Right. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.